is making professional choices. Now, one of the things that I beat a drum about all in the United States, and by the way, can you tell from I'm not, I'm not from around here? A little bit? All right, y'all. <laughs> it's how to be, how to present yourself professionally through the products that you use, as well as the way that you spend the money uh, that you make and to buy the products, okay? The most important thing, if you walk away from anything that I say today, is don't buy the products that you use in your practice from a drugstore, from a Walmart, or from a big box retailer, because your clients can see those products anywhere and everywhere. To differentiate yourself as a professional, you should be using products that they don't see every day. You should be using products built for a massage therapist, that's built for the rigors of what you do every day. Something that you're gonna want to actually have your hands in every day, and it's something that you want to give to the client. So you want it to be as natural, holistic, organic, as humanly possible. Because if you think about it, you're exposed to it way more than your clients, but aren't you, don't you think sometimes, sometimes we think more of our clients than we do ourselves? We don't want our clients to have that crap on you. Sorry. <laughs> so what we're going to do is talk about choosing professional products, and then we're going to talk a little bit about some cost-saving ideas as you purchase your products from professional product providers here in Canada. You have a ton of professional product providers. Now, many of you have heard of Massage Warehouse, and we're happy to service you, but there's Family Massage that has a great retail presence. There's uh, Know Your Body Best. There's Vitality Depot. You guys have a, and Relaxes. You've got a ton of people here already providing professional products. So definitely do the research online and find out what other professionals are using. Don't take shortcuts, because if you do not take yourself Seriously, as a professional, who will? Who really will? You've got to believe it first, and it starts from within, and then it starts from the products that you purchase. Okay, so being product savvy and cost conscious is really a good thing, which I know price point drives a lot of your buying decisions, <coughs> but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to cut the quality of the product and or the quality of the treatment because you're using substandard product because it was inexpensive. So what's the difference between consumer grade and professional grade products? As I mentioned, consumer grade, if you wanted to go buy a Jergens lotion, that'd be great. You could probably do a massage with it, but really, if your client sees you just squirting that right out of there, they're not gonna take you seriously. They're gonna think you're, you're like a doctor. You could be such a good therapist that you could put your hands over them and make them levitate, and it won't matter because they're gonna suddenly see all these things that they can buy in a drugstore. I'll tell you a quick story. I hope I don't have this in my presentation or some blowing it. One day I went to a, a therapist and, and they were in their home and they were running their practice under their home and they had Spongebob sheets on their table. <laughs> now, I think that's funny and I'm, you know, I'm good and I'm happy with a joke. I like to cut up too, but, but really, I, at that point, I really kind of clocked out. I'm like, okay, were well, these other kids dead? Where did they, I don't even know where this came from, honestly. But I got a massage on Spongebob sheets, which was excellent. She had Tinkerbell folded on her she's folded up on her shelf for the next client that was coming in. So I thought, okay, not a Disney. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so would you want your mechanic to buy these tools from a public from a, a discount club, from the big box discount clubs? I don't know if you have Sam's, but you have Costco, and you have all of these different uh, types of big box stores, Walmart and so forth. So, you know, if you wanted to think about it from professional terms, would your chiropractor Would your surgeon, let's think about this, what if you're, what if the guy you took your car to and your engine was broken and you just took, him to, took your car to a mechanic and he'd been buying his tools at the dollar store? It, come on, I'm not going to believe for a second that that guy, and he might be the best mechanic in the world, but if he is using stuff that I can get my hands on, then I'm thinking that he might not be the professional person to take care of an automobile. So we've got to think about, we've got to think about ourselves as, the people who are fixing, the professional people fixing the automobiles, which are the, the people who are trying to cure the issues, right? So again, things that they can see in their everyday lives are not professional grade products. Only buy your products from professional grade product providers. Does a table have to be expensive to be a good table? Well, I'm a big proponent of no. I don't think you have to spend eight million dollars to find a good table. However, I don't think finding the cheapest one on Craigslist is a good idea either. What are the things that you look for? The reason I'm talking about tables is I, uh, 
am very proud to be a manufacturer of tables. Um, we're such a house manufacturer of a brand called the NRG. And we know exactly what's been going on with that table from start to finish. We know about the wood that goes in it. We know about the, the vinyl. We know about the foam. And I encourage you to check out the people who are here. We've got um, Custom Graphics that's over in the Vitality Depot booth to talk to you more about professional grade products in regards to tables. There's plenty of table folks here. And go check, check the differences between the tables. Some things you're going to want to look for. There's a full length hinge underneath the table. If you see a table that has a hinge and a hinge and a hinge, that's going to give the table an opportunity to warp. Okay? So you don't really want that. You don't want to have your table have any flexibility. A piano hinge, a full length piano hinge underneath the bottom of the table is always a more sturdy way to go. That would be professional grade. The three inch thing is great if it's in your hubby and you just want to have a table for your house. Or if you have a single client, for in fact, that wants to keep a table at their house. That would be fun. There's not going to be five to eight people on it a day, getting on and off of it, all different sizes. You know, some people are picking flowers, like myself, and some people are not. And so you want to be able to take care of all of the needs and have a table that will, will service that and hold up to, the, to that type of use. Uh, doing wheel knobs, I can't stress that enough. I know that doesn't seem smart, or and like, why are you even worried about that? But if you have one knob and you forget to tighten it, that table can fall. If you have two, it's kind of like it's kind of like having a backup plan. So it's a liability. It's a, it's a savior for you for liability. I know it seems silly to think about it, but I think about falling. I again am a pretty flower, and I sure don't want to hit the floor because somebody forgot to tighten the lid. I'd like to have a little safety net if you don't mind. Strength and stability. The strength of a table is, is, is measured in a few ways. A couple of things that you're going to want to look for is a solid wood platform. One that does, you want, feel free to turn the tables over. Most table manufacturers who are professional products, all table manufacturers that provide professional products, don't use wood that have knots, because where there's a knot, there's a weakness. So if you see any knots in the wood, check the ones at Costco, check that out. Because, I'm not so sorry, I don't want to get down Costco, but you just shouldn't buy your tables. I don't care where you buy them, just don't buy them there. Um, if you want to look for the strength, you're going to want to look for the corner braces, the, an ample corner brace that's going to be where the leg meets the table. You're going to need something pretty thick. It needs to be a pretty, pretty solid block of wood because if you think about it, that's supporting the leg holding up the petite flower on your table. So how do you know that it's well built? Well, you know, you've got to do research. You've got to go on the web. You've got to check it out. You've got to find out what your how wide a table you need based on your body structure, who your market is going to be. If you're going to use athletes, you're going to need a bigger table. If you're a little, if you really truly are, and um, the least is more a petite flower, a 30 width table might not work for you because it may make you practice improper body mechanics. So an injured therapist is an unemployed therapist, so you have to protect yourself as well. What about the foam? I get this question 8,726 times a day. What's the difference in the phones? Well, phones are extremely important. One of the things that we're pushing towards in the massage industry is to utilize soy foam. That's my goal. Uh, some manufacturers are already doing this, so do your homework. Um, but I think the greater we go, the better. Foam, soy foam, many uh, automobile manufacturers are using soy foam in their, in their upholstery. It's a renewable resource. It's not made of petroleum. It keeps us non-dependent. On, on these type of uh, products that can be produced that can create all, all, all kinds of havoc for your health long term and for our environment. But for densities of the foam, thanks. Beautiful. Can you hear me? Awesome. Um, so the foam density is important. Many table manufacturers are going to put a very dense layer of foam on the first layer, a little more cushy on the second layer, and then a really layer on the top and they do that so that have you ever been on somebody's table that's had it for more than a minute and you lay on it and you bottom out on it has anybody ever bought, put their knee on it and felt the, the plywood underneath that's why they build it that way so that you don't have that foam degradation after years and years and years of use you don't get that with a consumer grade table so if you think about how many people you're talking about a day if you're a successful practitioner you're going to use this table a lot so you're going to need that density of foam some of the commonly compared features that you may want to think about are the weight, width, the working weight, the foam density, the length, height range, whether or not it has shiatsu cable release. Do you know what that is? 
Okay, underneath the table, you can make, I don't know if you can see under this one, there's, there's aircraft cabling that holds the table for, for strength. This aircraft cabling is important because it keeps the legs from splaying. Some guy has a patent on that, and we all have to pay this guy. I don't know who the guy is, but everybody that manufactures a table has to pay this guy two bucks every table you make. So it's expensive to do, but it's, it's the best plan out there. He has it patented, and, and why if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we, we utilize this, and the shiatsu allows, you have two wing nuts that attach it to the leg. The shiatsu cable release allows it to lie flat on the table, uh, flat on the floor so that you can practice shiatsu. So this table, and many, many of the tables, will lie completely flat. Without taking those wing nuts off, your table won't lie flat because of the tension of the aircraft, uh, aircraft cables. So if you're gonna practice shiatsu, think about that. Look for a table that has a shiatsu cable release. Look for your warranty on your structure. Some have five years, some have a limited, even more limited than that. Some of them are lifetime. I can tell you from my tables, the NRG tables, the Karma has a lifetime warranty. You buy it one time, you buy it once. You have a table for life. Um, package inclusions. This is where Massage Warehouse excels, I think, beyond even my it's expectations. We create packages to go with your tables all together. So let me just, let me just describe to you what I'm talking about as a package. All of the beautifulness that you see on the stage behind me, hold on, let me move my petite flower self over here. <laughs> All of this that you see behind me, including this beautiful chair, is a table package. And my company sells this table package for $449. With everything you see on the table. I know. Did you get this? What? I love that. You know why? Because, because we, we think about the therapist and we think about professional grade products for these therapists. So everything you see on the table, there's a few things that won't go because they're props. It's this stuff right here, it's this first few little bottles. But all of this is going with this table. So, so look for the package inclusions. What are the go-alongs? Has somebody really thought about what you need as a therapist? Has somebody put that thought together and provided you a package so it takes the thinking out of your hands and you can trust somebody to do that for you? Well, we do. We do that for you. Do you need an adjustable headrest? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you probably realize that more in this market, this is more from the American market. Um, we, there are wooden platforms that are flat, that have no adjustability at all. Have we all seen these? They're great, they're cost effective, but they're uncomfortable. And if you are really, truly all about the comfort of your client and the working of your client, and your client focused, spend the extra money to get them. If you buy a table that doesn't have one, spend the extra money to upgrade. Um, all the tables that you see up here come with adjustable headrests. And a uh, custom craft works from Vita and Vitality Depot were kind enough to donate this table as well. So this is also a prize. Custom Craftworks is one of our favorite manufacturers. So definitely check out that website. There's Oakworks, there's uh, Earthlight. There's a number of great table manufacturers. I'm sure there are some here in Canada as well. I'm just not as versed in, in what manufacturers are up here. So there are so many types of lubricants. How in the world do you, do you know what to use? Well, this is the Bon Vital line, which is personally one of my favorites. Um, we sell a number of lines, and uh, it's so easy to sell the Bon Vital line. They are in the trade show hall, and I would go into all kind of great detail, but I couldn't do it justice. So thank goodness Stephanie Beck from Bon Vital is here to help us learn about how to make these decisions. She's going to be a presenter this afternoon. So I'm going to leave that up to her because there's nobody better at that than her. So I'm just going to leave that to her. So she'll be talking to you a little bit later about the lubricants. So on massagewarehouse.com, you can check out our quick reference guide. It's, a, it's located in your education on our products page, the very first landing page. And you're going to see a side-by-side -side description of how, and you'll see this also on the Bon Vital site, um, a side-by-side -side comparison of how oils go with creams, that go with lotions, and what modalities they're used for, and what they're suggested for, climates that they're best used in, so there's a wealth of information on the Massage Warehouse webpage. So it's all about options. You know, why not look for quality products that cost less money? I suggest you do it. I know I've said Massage Warehouse probably 7,000 times, but there are so many. I don't really care where you buy your stuff, okay? I know that sounds crazy because I represent Massage Warehouse, and I should all be trying to recruit you and my help you into buying from only us. But there are so many, 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 many providers of professional grade products. And it doesn't matter to me just as long as you are doing the right thing by your environment, keep it in mind, doing the right thing by yourself, and certainly doing the right thing by your client. 
So what else can you do to save money? I'm gonna breeze through this because I have a lot of speakers today. Um, how much you buy makes a big difference. If you buy an eight ounce tube of something or an eight ounce bottle of something, by the time you rack that up to the amount of a gallon, you probably paid three times for it for what you could have paid for the gallon. So buy a bigger bulk and buy the smaller little bottle to dispense it into. Um, it makes more sense, and if you buy in bulk like that, you are going to save money on the bottom line. If you buy eight ounces at a time, I recognize, I, rec I recommend you doing that for sampling, but really, in the long term, to save a little bit of money, you're going to want to buy in bulk. How you pay for it also makes a very big difference. Many, many, many credit cards pay you points. Points are fabulous. I mean, with my American Express card, I get all kinds of points. So I spend a thousand dollars on my American Express card, I get a fifty dollar gift card. So I don't know what all credit cards you have up here in Canada. I imagine MasterCard and Visa. They do have points redemption. So think about that. While you're spending money on things you need every day, how can you get a little something back for yourself? So consider consider taking money credit card for your business expenses only, and not you know Kool Aid at the grocery store and diapers and whatever. Business expenses only. Because this is going to help you in the long run with your expenses and your accountants if you should choose to, to hire one or if you want to do your own. Uh, your own accounting is going to let you have a better idea of what you're spending on your on your uh, business. So advertising too doesn't just happen, but it doesn't have to cost a whole hoop of money to, to happen. This poor little girl, she's just so awesome. So you've got to find ways that are inexpensive just when you're starting out for advertising. And I think my next presenter is going to give us a great way to get started on that. It is so inexpensive, and you're going to be able to see the value. Of, of what marketing your business can do. People, just because you graduate, I know it feels like when you graduate, the entire world knows it. Because I graduated. And everybody should just come home to me because I graduated. It doesn't work that way. I wish it worked that way, but it doesn't. You've got to get in the community. You have to advertise. You have to market. It's your responsibility. You've got to raise yourself against, and I don't want to say competitors because we're going to be touching you. We're going to have a group. But you do have competitors. You have competitors. Everyone that does massage in your area is a competitor. Now, we can love them. We can have both of them. We can have chicken dinner on Sundays if you want to. That's cool. We can have pants and see kumbaya, but at the end of the day, it's business people. And we've got to be able to set ourselves apart, right? So you've got to advertise. You have to be in the face of business. It's on the web. It means in print. It means in any other means that you can do by doing Relay for Life, for doing, for doing charity, for doing all types of other events. Get out into the community and certainly be involved. So here's a couple of ways to keep a, a few steady streams of income. First of all, I don't know how the situation is here in Canada, but I imagine it might be something similar to what we're going through in the States. You might hear that we're in a recession in the United States. And so for us, if you're in space and you need to, your rent's coming back here again, and you're like, yeah, you know what? My renewal is coming up. I really think I need to look somewhere else because this is too expensive. Before you do that, go renegotiate. Nobody wants to lose a tenant. Not in this economy, not in your economy, not in any economy. If you've got a good paying tenant, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. They will reduce your rates if you threaten to leave. Be ready to do that if, you think of, if you're thinking about saying, hey, look, I need to reduce or I need to move. Be prepared to make that move. But definitely, instead of picking up and, and moving from where you've already established your business, consider renegotiating your rent. That's another way that you can save money on your bottom line. So if you work from home, if you've got the space, do it. It's always good, but if you do, don't have the kids' toys in the foyer, it'd be great if you had a separate entrance, completely separate from your living quarters. Um, you want to maintain that professionalism. You don't want them, you know, tripping over your SpongeBob sheets or, you know. You can have those, you know, if you like it, but don't put them anywhere your clients can see them. Okay, save your receipts for everything. Um, I don't know if you can do tax deductions up here for your business expenses, yes, no, maybe? Okay, so save every receipt, and when I say every receipt, every receipt, because every one, every one of them counts, which goes back to, it speaks to, do it on your credit card, because you can have your credit card take care of all of that for you, you have your printout, and you don't have to have a shoebox full of stuff that you can take to your account. So unless you can say yes to every question that I'm about to ask, you need an accountant. Do you, are you a CPA? Do you have CPAs up here, certified public accountants? All right, anyone? Bueller, anyone? No? Okay, can you deduct the cost of your CEUs? Can you deduct business trips? Do you know what percentage of your rent or mortgage may be deductible if you work from home? Can you deduct renovations? Do you know the current allowance for mileage? Can you deduct your car maintenance? 
not from the guy at the dollar store either. I mean, real, real, real mechanics. Do you know how to itemize? Do you know what to do if you're called for an audit? So it also, find out what your, what your province uh, allowances are. I don't really know the tax structure up here, but I, I have to think that there's taxes. There's all kind of STs that I don't even know what to do with. I just pay it when I get the bill. So I'm learning. I'm, I'm going to be a closet Canadian before it's over. <laughs> so should, I, should you have an accountant? If you can afford to do it, it's well worth the money. It takes the pressure off of you and you got some backup if anybody tries to audit you. So it's another way to set yourself apart professionally. You're not sitting down trying to crunch numbers. You're doing the therapy that you love and you're allowing that type of work to be done by someone else. So in conclusion, just, just always just try to think of yourself as professionals. I know that you already do. Think of yourself as the people who are the go-to in your healthcare. Your clients are coming to you not because, not because you just graduated, but because you have done something that has made them have the impression that you're the go-to person, you're the professional, you're the one that I need to go to because I think you can help me with my product pain. Live up to that expectation. Do it through your products, do it through your marketing, do it through the, the products that you use being friendly to the environment. And with that, I think if you can follow those steps, and keep your receipts, buy professional brand products, I think you're, on to, you're off to the right start. Certainly, I applaud you guys for even coming into the massage um, profession. It's a profession filled with people who love other people, and I think that's something that we all need a little bit more of. So now we will sing Kumbaya if you'd like. <laughs> but um, I'm very, 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 very passionate about massage. I love it. I live it. I eat it. I breathe it. I depend on it for my roof over my head, for the clothes that I wear, for the food on our table, for my daughter's diapers. We depend on massage for everything. So saving money is important but also being a professionalist as well. So I thank you guys for listening to my presentation. Thank you very much.